up in the top left position, playing as the teal zerg. Oh, sorry, it's the pink zerg. Take it back. Pink zerg player. From my insanity, it is Dana. And his opponent down in the bottom right, from Team Evil Geniuses, the blue zerg player. It's Jadon. Now, for anyone just joining us, Dana is 1-0 up against Jadong. Jadong apparently has a 91% win rate in ZVZ. And Dana's just like, you know what? I don't care. Let's knock that down a bit. My insanity's here. We've been training with Stardust, you know? The last winner of DreamHack. Always good times. Now, as it's currently standing, both players droning, so no cheesy shenanigans at the moment. And... If this continues, we could be going into another slightly longer game. Very exciting stuff going on at the moment. The spawning pool is coming down for both players simultaneously. Very refined builds from each of them. And, yeah, as it stands, this is a relatively normal-looking game. I'm always really dubious when I say a normal-looking game in ZVZ. Because while at this stage, nothing's too exciting to happen. If you take your eye off the, like, lava count or... To kind of if someone stops droning for a moment or two it can suddenly become a normal game into oh my god they're rushing me and when that happens is always pretty scary but all in all as things stand we we can see but um yeah hatcheries coming down on both sides things still looking normal i like normal i'm not gonna lie normal time in the early game makes me makes me pretty happy because it means the mid game is going to be good. We get to see some more potential Muta on Muta action. And I, I did actually want to touch on that a little bit. Um, purely because Muta on Muta hasn't been as common recently. Due to the fact that the Spore Call is now dealing so much damage to Mutalisks. And uh, you can go for Hydras out quickly and go for some counter aggression while defending early Muta flocks. However, the reason that last game the Muta on Muta became viable is because the Zerg and Baneling phase continued on for longer than normal. And because of that, both players was able to get that down quite quickly. Get into a relatively good spot and just get down their spires. But neither player scouted the other person's spire. Dana, going mutilist, went for the plus one flyer carapace, which, as I said, is the upgrade you always get in ZVZ. And the reason you always get that rather than the attack, which you get in other matchups, is because of muta on muta fights. The bouncing glaive with plus one carapace does less damage than a bouncing glaive with plus one weapon attack. So the damage reduction is greater on the splash damage, which is critically important. And why that last engagement on the Muta on Muta fight went in Dana's favor. Also, Dana had the ground superiority, which meant that the Zergling soaked up some of the bouncing glaives too. So once you start getting that initial kind of tipping point in Muta on Muta fights, it becomes, it snowballs really quickly. And one player will win significantly most of the time. Anyway, Dana is getting the scout off. Sees the one gas up there. Both players getting speed down near identical times. The drone count, exactly the same. The supply count, one in favor of Jadong at the moment. Just due to the fact that he's got those two Zerglings on the field. So, very, very close game. Bailing this coming down for Dana again. But the evolution chamber for Jadong. Okay. Is he going to be going for some upgraded Zergling play? He certainly could be. Could get ground plus one Carapace and go for some kind of Zergling Roach timing push. Of course, that's a big thing to look for. If you get the Carapace, you generally know that it's going to be um, indecisive between, obviously, Roaches and Zerglings, a combination of both. But that, of course, all means we've got to wait and see what does come down. There's plus one Carapace. Okay, Jadon could definitely be going for some roaches quickly up this game, getting the second gas down. Meanwhile, Dana just sitting there, Baning Nest is nearly completed, still droning quite heavily. Both players fairly equal on the drone counts. Um, two gases on both sides. Um, is that a third? Yeah, two gases. Only one up in the main base at the moment for Dana. And yeah, between these two, things looking pretty good. JD, ooh, getting 22 Zerglings down. This is going to be a big little shove. Dana needs to identify this, needs to make sure the Banelings are there because that's when things start getting a little bit more fun. Zergling's still running around, flooding forward. The Overlord will see them. And now does Dana have the Lava to produce anything? No, only two Lava down at the moment. Has four Zerglings, six Zerglings down the way. Two Banelings morphing and also getting down a second spine caller. Knows this is going to be a big shove. JD waiting for a moment for the additional Zerglings to make their way across the map. But 
Are there going to be enough Zerglings to defend for Dana? He does have two Banelings, two more on the way out. They're on the ramp. The Queen's blocking it off. This is good news, but the Zerglings have made it into the natural base. Starting to pick apart some of these drones. The Banelings waddling forward as quickly as they can, trying to close up the distance of the Speedlings, but Speedlings made it up into the main base. Can the Baneling get the hit? No! The Zerglings get away. The drones fighting at the natural, up against these Zerglings. Quite a lot of damage being done here by Jadong. Killing three drones there, and all in all, this is still going quite well for Jadon. Oh, good baning hits there. This is getting picked apart. Dana also getting down the spire. Has that been spotted from Jadon? That is the big thing. Well, it's down to the natural. It must have been. I can't believe that he hasn't seen that. And oh no, he hasn't. It came down after those Zerglings were taken out. So no, no knowledge that that's coming. Jadon also getting down his spire. Plus one ground carapace about to kick in for Jadon. So that push came in before the plus one ground carapace. Critical. Jadong also committing a lot more to speedlings, ready to deal with this counter aggression. Remember, he doesn't have a baneling nest. And with no baneling nest, that simply means that the zerglings and banelings from Dana are always going to trade a lot better if he gets some banelings of his own out. Third base coming down from Dana. JD about to take his third base as well. We're getting back into that same position we saw in game number one. Are we going to see this Mutal Muta action again? Will JD get down the plus one carapace this game for the Mutalists? My goodness, I hope he does, because if he doesn't, it's going to be a bit of a problem. Um, just in short, last game, it makes such a difference. Some Zergling engagements at the Watchtower there. Dana's still trying to secure off that third base quite happily. JD's is on its way to a little bit behind. The Spire out a few seconds earlier for Dana, but less gas in the bank. Can only afford six Mutalists, or five with a plus one. Um, and yeah, JD going to try and run in with some more Speedlings here. Round the side, will scout the third base. Could actually have a good job of trying to deny it. Meanwhile, Baneling does get a good connection there, forcing JD back that side. Baneling's waddling over for Dana there. Is he going to be able to save this hatchery? Trying to as quickly as possible. The Banelings don't get a great connection there, but this next one is a bit better. But still, JD has a few too many Zerglings. Plus one, Ground Carapace also helping. Dana really wants to save this third hatch. Can he do it? More Zergling streaming in here for Jadong. He's going to try and shut it down. Cancel is forced from Dana, and that puts Dana in a bit of a tough situation because now JD has that third. It's about to complete, and that is an increase in economy, increase in production, and now it's all going to come down to the Muta fights. Oh, the natural base taking a little bit of damage. And is this going to keep up? We can see the JD trying to fall back, trying to deal with these Mutalists. More Queens need to get pumped out. Small call is potentially. JD does have a small advantage in the Muta flop count, but in terms of the air carapace upgrade, it's identical. That means the ground battle is also going to be critically important. If the Muta counts are similar and the upgrades are similar, whoever wins on the ground will win the air fight because the bouncing glaives will get soaked up by some of those Zerglings. In it comes now JD's Mutalist, forcing Dana back at the moment. Dana also losing, losing an over or just as a few pops, it doesn't get supply blocked, although was for a fraction of a second. Dana running some more Zerglings all around the map. The Mutalists have been pushed back for JD, so he has no knowledge that this is coming in at the moment. Dana sitting there with 25 Lings and four Banelings up against 12 Zerglings of JD. JD still has no Baneling nest. That's the big thing to note. Zerglings are making their way forward. Dana is going to try and run straight up into the main. Is going to be able to do so. Could start picking away at a good number of drones here. Going to try and do as much damage as possible. Also simultaneously moving in towards the third, but there's a good number of units there for Jadog in order to try and defend that. More units streaming across the map though. The Mutalist flock currently sitting at 15 to nine in Jadong's favor. That is a big advantage for him, and mainly due to the fact that he is mining quite a chunk more gas a minute. 700 gas a minute for the Evil Geniuses player, compared to 450 for the My Insanity player. So, this game is now in Jadong's favor. It is that simple. Dana is down in supply and down in workers due to that damage being done, but critically down in the Mutalist count. However, that can change very quickly. Whoever has the ground advantage could get a good little win. So that means if Dana is able to get some beautiful bailing hits off against Jadong's only Zergling force, things can suddenly go the other way. But Jadong, he's not going to want to risk that. Running in with the Mutalist, or flying in, should I say, to the main base. Going to start trying to pick off these Queens and the Drones. The Queen gets vaporized. No Spore Callers down here. This is a catastrophic amount of damage. The Mutalist count for Jadong, significantly high. 24 to 15 is going to start engaging here. Picks off those Mutalists incredibly quickly, focusing them down one at a time. The splash damage is pretty huge. This is not looking good for the My Insanity player. Jadong massively ahead. And GG from Dana, even calling him Gosu. And I would have to agree with